This is Being Awesome with Rob Springer. Hey everybody, it's Rob, and you're listening to Being Awesome, the podcast about loving Transformers and having fun. This week in Awesome, actually, hold on. Before I go into this week's talking points, I just want to extend some thanks out to some compliments <laughs> i've gotten some really positive feedback uh lately i've had people contact me on facebook uh tell me through uh the talk transformers group as well as leave some great uh itunes reviews uh the positive feedback is great i really appreciate it guys thank you so very much from the bottom of my heart you know i do this i do this to have fun but i also uh do discuss people like what I do. So thanks so much, guys, and uh hope more people keep... uh I'm really bad at talking, which is stupid considering this is a audio platform. <laughs> um, basically, I hope more and more people find us here, you know, being awesome. It's a podcast about loving Transformers and having fun, and it's basically... Because we, we love our hobby. We love Transformers. And we basically, we're all saying F you and flipping birds to all these just whiny wiener butt people who keep trying to ruin everything for everyone. No one wants to hear all that negativity. I'm trying to enjoy my hobby. Go go be negative somewhere else. You, you suck. We don't suck. That's why we're here. So thank you everybody who's uh, given me the praise recently. I really appreciate it. And all of you that's been around and who's given me praise in the past, or hell, just keep listening. Thank you so very much. It means a whole lot to me. So let's get on with the show. This week in Awesome, whole bunch of crap. <laughs> um, last week, you know, I talked about the Titans. Titans, jeez. <laughs> the... Um, the fan vote poll for the next Titan class figure after Fortress Maximus. And, you know, we had Scorponok, Trypticon, and Omega Supreme as our choices, and Trypticon won. And I'm perfectly okay with that. You know, I voted for Scorponok because out of the three, Scorponok's the one I'd want the most. Um, excuse me, I had to swallow. Uh, but... At, Trypticon certainly came in second, so I'm totally, totally, totally cool with having Trypticon in second. Um, that made no sense. I'm so I'm totally glad. Okay, with Trypticon winning the vote, Omega Supreme would have been okay, but like I said, I've always been kind of man eh, blasé over Omega Supreme. So even if Scorponok didn't win, I'm totally okay with Trypticon winning. And you know what? I probably have been fine with Omega Supreme too. Uh, Trypticon's great. You know, he's a big robot dinosaur, and being a kaiju fan, also, it's kind of hard to ignore a big giant dinosaur. You know what I mean? But one thing, uh, you know, being awesome is part of the Radio Free Cybertron family of shows, and excuse me. My eyes started itching, and water was in my mouth, making me water suddenly wanted out. My mistake. <laughs> um, I've heard a lot of conversation from our, from the other shows like the mini cast with John DeLuna and on our RFC proper about the guys basically talking over why they'd want things to go in. And one thing I kept hearing about was um, the engineering, like the engineering to be dynamic and a dynamic transformation. And I kept saying to like i wish i was there to tell the guys like guys these are all city bots city bots turn into a big old pile of robot parts with a ramp hanging off i don't i don't, I don't know why you guys are worried about the engineering <laughs> because it's like look they're just gonna unfold <laughs> you know that's that's all that's all metroplex does whatever <laughs> i just thought it was funny but Trypticon will be great. I hope... You know, these Titans tend to be a pretty close to the original toy kind of thing. 
Um, Metroplex strayed a bit from it, but Devastator was more close to the original Devastator. So I hope um, Trypticon is also close to the original Trypticon, because while I do like for them to get creative with it, na 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 na, I love it. Love it when they get creative and refreshed original designs. However, when you say Trypticon, I want that big, blocky, chunky son of a gun. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't want, I don't want a frail Matthew Broderick Godzilla movie style Trypticon. I want a big old chunky robot dinosaur that sounds like Robert from Everyone Loves Raymond. Because that was him. He did Trypticon's voice. He also did Hulk Hogan's voice. Um, it's so weird to think Brad Garrett was a voice actor at one point, but he totally was. And that's pretty cool just whenever you do the random trivia of voice actors, you can be like, hey, Ray's brother from Everyone Loves Raymond was Trypticon. And people will look at you and say, shut up, nerd. And you'll be like, okay, glad I talked to you people. You know, you're what's wrong with everything, not me. Uh, for those watching on the video version of the show, um, you guys will see my brand new pop filter. I, you know, I got this whole new mic set up and a mixing board and all that. And when I first started getting it all set up, I was using a regular microphone. Well, my uh, dynamic rad-looking microphone came in. I used it last week, but that joker was popping every few minutes. So we got me set up with a pop filter here, which I... It's even harder not to stare at it <laughs> than it was the microphone. But hopefully I sound much better. I think I'm getting a little more used to the uh, mixing board. So hopefully, hopefully it sounds good. If not, next week <laughs> I'll just play with it a little more and hopefully we'll... Hopefully we'll get this down to a good mix, because I have a very deep voice. Um, <clears throat> just like last week, the minute I start coughing, or talking, I start coughing, and my mouth wants to water a lot today for some reason. I have no clue what's going on. My body is going crazy. But hopefully, you know, I have a very deep voice, and uh, but it's still got a little, a little, little, little high end in there somewhere. You know, I got a. A little, there's a little poindexter to my voice. I mean, I'm doing a podcast about Transformers. I'm going to sound a little like this. So, but hopefully, the way I've adjusted the mixing board, it actually sounds like me and not like somebody else. <laughs> I guess that probably wouldn't be a bad thing to sound like somebody else. You know, just kind of have a different voice for a day. That wouldn't be too... And when I say a different voice, not like when you got a cold and you lose your voice. Because whenever it happens to me, <clears throat> I get really like this. And it just sounds horrible. So, yeah. I just rambled on for a minute about nothing in particular. Also, this week in Awesome, um, I'm going to talk to you guys for a minute about a convention I go to every year. It's an Atlanta area convention called Joe Atlanta. It's Joe Atlanta and the Great Atlanta Toy Convention. It started off as a... Uh, local G.I. Joe convention, more aimed at the 12-inch uh, Joes, and of course going into the uh, three-and-quarter guys. Well, at some point, it's, they started expanding into being also a wider focus. So even though G.I. Joe takes a big focus, it also pays attention. It's also like, it's got a big reach. And when they started wanting to reach out to Transformers fans, they reached out to me and, you know, Kilby and I, as well as our friend uh, Dusty, uh, the same Dusty who drew the art for the TFCon Charlotte comic. We've been running a panel there for the past, this will be the third year we're doing it, uh, in 2016, starting the whole Transformers uh, I, end of Joe Lanta. And, uh, you know, in uh, 14, when we first started doing it, there was a pretty decent Transformers fan contingent there. And uh, last year, there was even more. Like, I was in the dealer's room, and Pappy's Toys and Collectibles. Uh, you see him at all your Transformers conventions. He had set up shop there. As well as the thing I never thought I'd see. I saw one dealer selling some third-party stuff. 
And the reason I say I thought I'd never see that is whenever you go to local toy shows or general toy shows, if they have Transformers, it's all official. And that's all well and good. The, the, the third party stuff is a much more niche thing, you know? So I never expected to see it in a more general show. But here's Joe Lanta and the Great Atlanta Toy Convention being mainly a G.I. Joe style toy. You know, it started off like that and then spread out to be, because Transformers and G.I. Joe are related. But with all the different toy lines there, I thought it was all going to be official stuff. And there was City Commander. So it's like each year we're making Joe Lanta to be a, desti a fan destination for Transformer fans in Atlanta in the spring. So hopefully, guys, um, I'd like to see you guys there. Uh, in 2016, it'll be March, I believe, 11th, 12th, and 13th. Uh, go to JoeAtlanta.com. Oh, I got it on my phone. Go to JoeAtlanta.org, almost said .com, and you'll find all the news there. It, it's a great show. I hope to see everyone there. The prices are reasonable. And it's just a good time. One thing I really like is that Saturday night, they have a parachute drop for uh, G.I. Joe's. And the entire hotel lobby becomes Armageddon. They, uh, guy, people who've brought parachuted Joe figures, be it the dolls, uh, the three-quarter inches. Last year, Diecast from RFC Proper and me bought dollar uh, parachute toys from Walmart the night before. <laughs> And we participated, just getting going all the way up to the top floor, flinging those jokers over the side and watching them parachute down. And the people down at the bottom were all watching them. And also taking for cover because the action figures are just careening down at like the speed of sound. It is, it is both dangerous and hilarious at the same time. And, you know, there's custom cars. Um... There's just, there's a lot of events, you know, there's always Walking Dead stuff, there's uh, Monster High stuff, there's a general 80 toy panel, of course there's the awesome Transformers panel that ends up becoming an episode of RFC Extra, um, and you'll see, there's a, of course a Joe panel, there's a lot of Joe stuff there, because like I said, it's, it started off as a Joe convention, and it's still, there's still a lot for those Joe guys to do there. And the Joe stuff is really awesome because the 12-inch uh, Joe guys are mainly about military action man type stuff, like military fantasy adventure guy, like Indiana Jones or anything. So these things they'll be doing are really cool. Like I've, you know, I've said before, you know, of course I love my G.I. Joe, but I like the core, I like my Halo minifigures and all that. That's all military fantasy action, dude. So, and you know, like, Microman, Micronauts, kind of cheesy sci-fi, that falls into it. So it all kind of works in. So basically, if you like Transformers, you probably like all this other stuff too. And you know what? There it all is. In a cool convention, in a good part of town, a lot of, not a convenient places to go eat, a lot of convenient shopping, you know. And, you know, me and Kilby will be there. Dusty will be there. If you haven't met Dusty, you get to meet Dusty. He's a hell of an artist. Dusty is actually one of the artists behind Mellow Mushroom, the uh, popular pizza chain. You guys know that place? Dusty, as well as the guys that run it, are all like the artists of Mellow Mushroom. That's so cool. <laughs> so, basically, I, I probably should have thought more of what to say before I started going into it. But basically, if, if you're in the Atlanta area, if you're in the southeast, or you're in the uh, availability to travel in March, I'd love to see you there. It'd be awesome. Because, like I said, this will be the third year, and the past two years we've already seen the Transformers fan contingent grow more and more and more. I'd really, really like to see Joe Lana become a Transformers fan destination. And I think it can. Because it's a fun show. So that that that's the that part of the show. I've said show 50 times in the past 15 minutes. So how about we skip over to the Q&A section of the show. The QA, questions and awesome portion of the show. Um, I was about to say it's brought to you by Tide. 
<laughs> the thread, the question uh, and answer thread is posted in the Talk Transformers Facebook group. That's the official message form of being awesome and the best place in the world to talk about Transformers Online. Boom, I said it. You, you want to prove me wrong? <laughs> you can prove all you want because I'm proving you wrong at Talk Transformers. That was kind of goofy. Mainly because I never really know how to say that without sounding like I'm shilling. And I don't want to sound like I'm shilling because when you're shilling, you're being dishonest. And I'm not being dishonest. I'm being honest. So I'm trying my best to, s to sound as genuine as I am. That's the best place you can go online to talk Transformers with other like-minded people that just want to enjoy their damn hobby. That's what the show's about. That's what the forum's about. And that's what it should be about. Thumbs up. Horns up. Another thumbs up. High five. I, I, I do, I'm just pretending you're slapping. If you're walking around listening to this MP3, just start swinging your hands in the air. I guarantee we'll hit. We'll high five. And if you're watching the video, touch your screen. It's cool. So <laughs> when I post up those threads, or you can just submit one there on the forum. It's cool. Uh, you can do your questions or maybe some talking points you'd like to me to read on the air and I, you know I conversate with you or whatever it's totally cool and this week's Q&A comes from James Godier my my buddy and James goes on to ask let me clear my throat <clears throat> excuse me when was the last time you used a transformer as currency and if so what did you get I clearly remember in the first grade trading hyperdrive Blackjack and Scalor for a spinister missing one TM and a nose cone. James, that's a pretty cool story. And I'll be honest with you. Spinister missing a nose cone and a target masher was not an even trade. <laughs> but, um, sounds like you had cool. I'm going to tell you guys something that's going to make me sound even crazier than I already come out like. I don't get rid of my toys. <laughs> um, when I say that, I mean Transformers. I've never traded them. Now, that's not entirely true. One time, I think it was around 03, there was a, at the time, a uh, small candy line called, like, Bubble and Twist, Twist and Pop or whatever. And what it was was a... Uh, plastic little capsule and on one end was basically a bubble gum dispenser you twist the thing you either twist it or you push a button on the inside and bubble gum would come out all kind of swirled together like a play-doh factory thing or whatever and it's pretty good gum and on the other side of the capsule was a toy you know it had just kind of generic little rubber figures or whatever but they had a transformers armada series of them they had little figurines, not too dissimilar from decoys, based on Transformers Armada. Well, I kept getting Hot Shots and Megatrons. And I think there are about four different colors each character. And I wanted an Optimus. <clears throat> well, a friend of mine, he needed a Megatron in black. I had a couple of Megatrons of black. I just I just wanted one of each of each mold. I didn't necessarily want all the different colors. So he had an Optimus and I had a pile of Megatrons. Yeah, here's a black one. <laughs> so we traded and I got an Optimus. And then of course every single one I got after that was Optimus, so I don't even know why I traded. But it doesn't matter. Because he got the toy he was looking for and I got the Optimus, so I had an Optimus. That's it. Like, you know, I've gotten rid of toys in the past. Like, you know, stuff, not Transformers. And there has been Transformers I've bought as gifts to people. Um, but that's it. Really. <laughs> uh, most recently, and I guess this counts, uh, at TFCon Charlotte, I had a, um, a Primal Rage, I think it's Glacier, the Blue Monkey, and um, a Ring Raider set on a card that I've had forever. And I wanted to get rid of them. And I was planning to trade him with somebody for something. And my pal Jacob, who runs Retro Reboot, Reboot, Retro Reboot out in uh, North Carolina, he was all willing to trade for him. He was going to either buy him or trade him. 
And I took a trade, and he traded me. Machine Wars Thundercracker on card. Not bad. I don't know. I, didn't, I don't know if those that Ring Raider set or the Primal Rage had much of an aftermarket, more of just a someone would like to have it, you know, type of thing. So I felt we got a pretty good trade there. And, you know, I could pop an open Thundercracker here. I don't have, didn't have this version of Thundercracker before. I've got the mold as other characters, <clears throat> but I didn't have this Machine Wars version. And having it on card here, it's kind of nice. It's kind of neat always to have a couple of older toys still on package. Because you can look at them and be like, wow, I remember when. You know, I've got some uh, some of the boxes from Machine Wars toys that I put the got Soundwave and Optimus I keep sticking them back in their box and the box is cool and all and same reason like having this uh, card here just kind of a way to look back there's like the Kenner logo on the side because this was when Kenner was making them for Hasbro after Hasbro brought Kenner it's got all the cool G2 symbols and all that just just a great just nice to see the bubbles and package is in pretty good condition Good enough condition for me, but that's that's really it. I I never I don't really trade my toys. I don't trade my transformers. We'll say it like that. The only one time was for a little free figure and a pack of gum, for another free figure and a pack of gum. That's it. <laughs> that's pretty lame, huh? Probably sad to some people, but I love transformers. I when I buy one, I plan to keep it, <laughs> and uh. If I buy one that I don't plan to keep, it's because I bought it for a gift for somebody. Either that or somebody was looking for it and I picked it up for them. You know, I've, I've done that a million times for friends or whatever. Found, well, you know, they've done the same for me. That's it. But James, thank you so very much for your question. <laughs> I'm sorry I couldn't give you a more exciting answer than I did. But... Please keep submitting your questions and, or talking points or whatever at the Talk Transformers Forum. Um, it, it, you know you're using Facebook. Everyone uses Facebook. It's in the groups. Search Talk Transformers. It'll pop up. Request to join. I'm one of the admins. You know, we got a couple of admins. We'll let you in. There's no prerequisite other than requesting to join. And we'll let you in. And the only rule is don't be a tool. Because that, that's the only way. You'll get, that's the only way people want you to be gone, is if you're just a major jerk face. It's open, free form, everyone just come in here and enjoy your hobby, and you know, if someone's being a D-bag, we'll tell them to knock it off. And it's funny, the people that really need to go, usually find their own way out before we can tell them to go. It's kind of funny how that works. So, I'm still staring at this pop filter. I'll be honest with you, I kind of just want to walk around with it in front of my face looking at everything because I can see through it. You know how you're a kid, you, when you discovered you could see through something, you try to walk around looking through it? I don't think I've ever grown out of that, and I still want to do it. And every time I look down, I know I'm not talking directly <laughs> into the microphone. So, once again, I hope it sounds good. I've been trying to make my show sound better because before I was using the webcam's microphone for audio and while it picked up everything and it sounded great it picked up everything and it that didn't always sound great it pick up a chair squeak it pick up the neighbor's dog barking um you name it <clears throat> you know i was staring at my phone because that's where i had the note with james's question in it and i just wanted to try something real quick so i hope you guys bear with me while i try something let's see how this works out Hey, uh, I use this phone all the time. That may be beyond my abilities at the moment. I ain't done. I literally just pushed the button for Siri, and she's telling me she can't do it right now. We ain't, we ain't having that. Hey, Siri. Hey, me? Yes, you fool. I figured as much. You're cocky. Can you sing the Transformers theme song? You wouldn't like it. Now, she's saying I wouldn't like the theme song or her singing it. Are you saying I wouldn't like the theme song or are you singing it? 
We were talking about you, not me. No, we were we were talking about you. Who I am isn't important. Yeah, you're becoming less and less important, I can tell you that. I thought so. Siri is kind of a passive Actually, I think Siri Siri, do you have a depression problem? This is about you, not me. Well, you see, I was thinking maybe maybe Siri was being depressed or something while she was giving me these answers, but now she's just being passive aggressive. Siri, what's your damn problem? Now, now. Do you need a nap? This is about you, not me. Well, I'm trying to talk with you, Siri. I don't like us fighting like this. Who, me? Yes, you. I thought so. You're kind of self-centered for a cell phone, you know that? Who, me? Yes, you. That's what I thought. You're no help. You're certainly entitled to that opinion. You know I own you, right? Siri knows many things. I, I, I don't know why I'm arguing with my cell phone. All I know is Siri wouldn't. Let's try this again. Siri, can you sing the Transformers theme song? You know I can't sing. Me? Are you on drugs? We were talking about you, not me. And now she's just being a dead horse. Just a repeating record. You know, I love my iPhone, but I only use Siri just to see what she'll say back. <laughs> she's never been useful. <laughs> I'm sure somebody has gotten some use out of it, but not me. But anyway, thanks everyone for listening. Being awesome is part of the Radio Free Cybertron family of shows. You can find us at tfradio.net for all of our shows and showtimes. And, you know, we're not just on tfradio.net. We're on iTunes. We're on Stitcher. You know, we're on YouTube. We're on Facebook. Being awesome, you can watch the video version on Facebook or YouTube. Or for the audio, and there's more audio listeners than there are video viewers, but I really thank everyone for watching. Um, the audio, of course, is on, you can off the site, off of, uh, you name it, Stitcher, iTunes. Wave your phone in the air. To, it'll download. For a couple of people who don't like me, they'll be like, oh, I got a virus. Being awesome just downloaded. Yeah, you, you got a virus. You got an awesome virus. That didn't make any sense. Um, <laughs> while you're at tfradio.net, Please go through, check out our Amazon links. Next time you need to do any shopping on Amazon, just please go through those links before you do it. You don't have to pay anything extra or whatever, and Amazon basically helps us out and helps us cover our expenses. And that's a really great way for you guys to help support us without actually having to pay for anything or whatever. And that's awesome. It's really a great way because it's like, yeah, we'd love to have some assistance in keeping the site online and everything, you know, keeping... Paying for all the expenses, we'd love some help with that. But we don't want to ask for your money. And Amazon makes it a really cool way to do it. So please, guys, if you could do that, we'd appreciate it. Um, I'm Rob. You can find me online at RoboRob Springer. That's R-O-B-O-R-O-B-S-P-R-I-N-G-E-R -O -O -E on Twitter and Tumblr. Yes, my last name is really Springer. So many people don't believe that and think it's just a screen name. It's like, no, it's just an awful coincidence that my favorite thing in the world has my name. So, guys, thanks so much for listening. Thanks so much for watching. And I will see you or I, I'm, 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 in, I'm in my computer room. So you guys will see or hear me next time. And I hope you guys... uh. I don't know where I'm going with this. Once again, I don't know how to end the show. Big shocker. Hmm. Hey, Siri. Hey, me? 
Can you say goodbye to all the people? Who, me? Thanks for listening, everybody. Series no help. So, uh, thanks. See you next week. This has been Being Awesome with Rob Springer. 